Today I have Robin Dunbar from Grid Metals, and Grid is a critical mineral company in Manitoba. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Tracy. Good morning. Good morning. And in our investor talk earlier today, you were talking about cesium. I, you've had a huge following on our shorts on why cesium matters. So maybe we should start there. Yeah, cesium is a really fascinating metal uh, and an opportunity in the critical metal space. Um, there's only been uh, three producing deposits of cesium ever globally. And there's currently only uh, three juniors that have um, you know, active uh, drill programs, uh, resource kind of exploration stage projects globally. So a real shortage of projects. And yet the metal is super critical uh, metal. It's, it's uh, extremely rare. It's, uh, it's got a, a number of really high-tech applications, including in uh, atomic clocks, which are used in global positioning. So there's a lot of uh, high-tech and military applications. Um, and then there's there's uses in drilling fluids for deep sea drilling, um, and a growing array of usages in optical, um, you know, solar panels, high tech applications. So it's a, really is a critical metal. It's just been designated by the Canadian and U.S. governments, and you know we're seeing interest from end users because there's really just a, a huge shortage of, of, of cesium uh, feedstock uh, in the world right now. So really unique opportunity. Well, and I love the name for grid metals. Everybody can remember you're on the grid and you've also your Falcon, it's your Falcon West project. That's it's very Falcon. high grade. Can you tell us a little bit yeah. more about your recent results? Yeah, we, we've, we've uh, just completed 67 holes of Falcon West. Falcon West is uh, just uh, it's about 800 meters off the Trans-Canada Highway. It's uh, south uh, east of Winnipeg. Um, and what we're drilling is a, a relatively flat line sheet um, and it's uh, it's a pegmatite, so cesium are found with along with lithium and rubidium. Um, and the the whole the zone that we're drilling is starts at about twenty meters down, and you know we're getting uh, you know a one to three meter zone of uh, the metal that we're looking for. The mineral we're looking for is polycite, which hosts high grade cesium. So you know when we we drill and we we get the polycite there, that's that's uh, you know the 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 grades we're getting is are as high as uh, 27% over a meter, um, which uh, really constitu uh, constitutes a very high, high value material. Um, Cause cesium trades for as, as a metal about 2,500 uh, uh, us dollars per gram. Um, and if you look at on the concentrate, like a, a chemical basis, it's about 20 times the price of, of, of lithium carbonate. So cesium carbonate, would be uh, 20 times the value. So uh, you can get a sense of, it's a very uh, high grade um, uh, commodity we're looking for. And to find polycite globally, there's just there's just a, a few occurrences around the world. As I said, very, very hard to find. And for everybody out there following the critical mineral sector, I'm going to get you to dumb down rubidium for us as well, if you don't mind, and the cesium. If I recall earlier today, you mentioned that you are fully funded into next year for developing your cesium project is that yeah correct? so yes we 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 just raised uh four million dollars most of that was from a um a strategic investor a uh, very uh high sophisticated mining investor that likes what we're doing particularly in the cesium space um and so we've drilled 67 holes we we uh, released the first 11 had some very good results um on a global scale compared to any other cesium project um so we're very uh pleased with that um, and so we have another, uh, you know, 50 odd holes to come, uh, in January, they're getting cut and sent in for assay. So those holes will come in and then we'll have, we'll do another follow-up. So hope to be able to get a resource, uh, for, uh, you know, sometime in the first half of next year. Um, so that would be, you know, one of the very few season resources, uh, out there in the, uh, globally. Uh, so the, 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 the path then is to, is to look at, uh, start the metallurgical work and, um, baseline work, which we've actually uh, done a lot of, um, and and look at uh, trying to get that project permitted really for a small open pit, which would be, um, you know, our target for it would be, you know, um, the timeline on that would be, you know, once we start the permitting process would be 18 months versus a, a, a project where you need tails and, and a mill would be like five years in Manitoba. So it could be 
could be quite an abbreviated timeline. Uh, step one, really, though, is to get the resource. Um, and, you know, as a, in terms of other metals, uh, the cesium does occur with lithium. Um, uh, spodumene, we're seeing some high-grade spodumene in the zone. And, and then there's a lot of rubidium around, which is a sister metal to uh, cesium. Uh, rubidium um, market is quite small. Like cesium market is, is in the range of four to 500 million US dollars a year. So still a small market, but, you know, growing, certainly growing. Um, and the um, rubidium market is, 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 is much smaller than that. But rubidium is, has a lot of the physical properties of cesium, um, very high conductivity, photovoltaic properties. Um, but rubidium does not occur in a mineral that like cesium can be up to 40% in polycyte, so you can extract it um, yeah, efficiently, whereas rubidium is, is generally in lipidolites and, and micas and tends to only get to a maximum of, of, of 2 to 3% in, in very high-grade materials. So it's not as widely used, but as, as new applications and the market grows, I think we, we may see uh, more adoption and, and uh, research go into uh, to rubidium. So uh, a very interesting metal to be sure. Well, of course, you have a tremendous professional background in the mining business development industry sector. I tell people all the time, go to LinkedIn and check out the CEO. So can you tell me why you have decided to focus on cesium? Yeah, I mean, the the metal is, is, uh, is very unique. Um, it's a it's a it's a it's a great differentiator, right? So w when we look at gold, you know, there's you know thousands of projects in copper. Is there, there's hundreds of projects and even rare metals and antimony. All these projects, there's many many deposits. And the the fascinating thing about cesium to me is that you have you have a a, a critical metal with really a, a true global shortage of of feedstock of ore to supply the 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 the, the, the the two company, the two main companies, and there's some smaller ones as well that that create uh, cesium products, um, and and so you have a, a commodity which is in short supply but highly critical and 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 rare, and and we've we've got an occurrence that you know I think at minimum we're going to have a small resource and we're hoping that it can become a major resource. That's the exploration uh, part of it, um, and so that creates a really unique opportunity. And the the development path for cesium is unique um, because you don't need a lot of capital because to make a concentrate a saleable product you mine the ore and in our case it's it's going to be from a shallow open pit to start and then you crush it and then use an ore sorter so the technology for ore sorting uh, cesium ore is is very well established and. You know, for the crushing and ore sorting, which you don't need a plant, you don't need tailings, you don't need water, um, you, and that creates a product um, that you can sell. So your capex is is you know very very low, and and the permitting is much faster because you don't have tailings or a mill. So it's a it's a rare metal with a with a, a really kind of a unique um, yeah, project timeline and and process because of the way it can be processed. And and you know one of the reasons I think you know, rare metals, like, you know, rare earths is, are produced in China is because, you know, they, there's a lot of expertise. They can be environmentally very, you know, tricky to, to develop. And, and, and cesium, we don't have that. Like the reason they use cesium in uh, drilling fluids, cesium formate, is because it's, it's environmentally friendly, environmentally benign. So that, that's the other thing. It, there's, you know, cesium, if you process it, can, can be used in a lot of um, high-tech applications, but in its, its, um, um, mineral form and in, in a concentrate form, it's 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 very benign. So there's a there's a there's a number of really appealing things to um, you know the whole cesium production and you know starting from the fact that you know there's demand and it's rare and it's high value and we think we can make some some money some some cash flow for grid um, you know on the horizon here um, and 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 that's something that you know for a junior is is a game changer. So put all those things together, um, you know, we think it's a fantastic opportunity for, for our company. Well, you've made some excellent points. We've been telling people for years that getting rare earths, many of the core four uh, rare earths from the ground into a magnet is a six 
stage process. Yep. And and most people don't want to hear about it because it's not a particularly exhilarating topic to get into. So let's go back to the cesium though. How did you find this high grade? I mean, can you just explain to a lot of us, because we're like, you know, you're telling us it's a super high grade. You've got a lot of expertise. How did you find this? Yeah, it's an interesting story. Uh, like a lot of things, uh, a series of events that you don't really anticipate. Um, you know, if, if you look at our portfolio, we're, we're really concentrated in most of our activity in Southeast Manitoba. So the um, Bird River Greenstone Belt. There we, um, you know, in the course of base metal exploration, we found there was a num no number of lithium pegmatites um, and we're close to the Tanko mine. So over the course of, you know, 19, uh, 2019, 20, 21, 22, we actually uh, drilled off a, a, a lithium resource and, you know, we, we were looking at ways to try to get that um, into production and, and uh, you know, uh, toll mill the ore at um, a mill nearby or send it to the, the Tanko mill. Tanko, um, you know, incidentally, they have a cesium uh, plant, uh, chemical plant, 100 kilometers away from us and a lithium plant. So, you know, we've had a lot of discussions with them over the years. Um, but in the area in Southeast Manitoba, we were saying, okay, are there other uh, areas that um, that have potential for, for, for lithium? And, you know, in our research, we found the next greenstone belt, you know, about 100 kilometers to the south. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, outcrop and not a lot of exploration. But one of the reports that had been done, um, guys looking for tantalum back in, in 2000, had drilled some holes. And in the logs, there was some cesium. Um, and, and so we, we thought, mm, you know, we knew that if you have cesium, it's the most, it's the last, um, um, mineral metal that comes out in the fractionation process. So as, as, as a pegmatite gets more complex, um, you know, you get lithium and then rubidium and cesium tantalum. Cesium is the last one. And so, you know, if you have cesium in the system, you probably have lithium somewhere. And that's the case at Falcon West. So we went down and we looked at, at acquiring the, that, you know, the showing that had the historical work done, which we got from, you know, a local geologist after, you know, considerable effort. And he had had some drilled some holes um, for a, a, a junior out of Montreal, which hadn't paid the bills. And so he had the core in his garage and he's a geologist. We got the core. We assayed that and we got some high grade cesium hits. So we said, OK, um, all the while we were watching the, you know, the activity in the cesium market with power metals co uh, company their market caps well over 100 mi uh, million dollars they have a, a small uh cesium resource in ontario and you know all the interest and we started talking to the industry oh cesium you know we're, if you have cesium more we'll buy it from you and and that type of thing so we we made the decision to you know mount a campaign to find a standalone cesium um uh, resource. So we started drilling in the historical area. That's the current area that we're in. And, you know, we're dr drilling on very tight spacing. So it's very equivalent to drilling like, a, you know, high grade gold. So you drill a lot of holes close together. Um, in our, in this case, what we're doing is, is the area that would kind of be a starter open pit. That's where we're concentrating. And that's the program we're doing now. So we've, we've just con completed 67 holes, um, we've had some fantastic hits, very high grade, uh, impressive numbers from the first 11 and, you know, the, the rest of the assays are going to come out in January and, uh, yeah, we're, we're very, uh, we're very, uh, encouraged by what we see. We're going to do another phase starting in, in, um, in January after Christmas and we'll, we'll do enough drilling to give us the basis for a resource. So it's happened, you know, once we, uh, hit the go switch. Um, you know, it's, it's happened pretty fast. Um, you know, it's, you know, there's been some delays with, you know, permitting and that type of thing, but we're, we're, you know, we've got all our permits now to drill and, um, yeah, it's looking, it's looking pretty encouraging. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, we hope the, that the drilling is successful and we have an other basis for a resource and, and then, you know, we'll look at moving the project forward from there. So, yeah, it's uh, just, uh, you know, the, the fact that there, there was some previous work done that showed that there was some cesium there, you know, I, I'd like to say we would have found it on our own, but probably wouldn't have, right? Because it's, uh, 
you know, it's a big province and, and, um, yeah, the, the, but the area is really interesting because there's a lot of pegmatites in the area that we are, that we're operating. Um, a lot of them appear to be, you know, very fractionated. There's lithium, there's rubidium. Um, yeah, so it's very, it's, you know, in the longer term, you know, we want to start to, to, to do more exploration, but, um, in the broader area, but first things first, we, we want to come up with a resource and, um, you know, look to potentially make some cash flow, uh, going forward as, as a number one priority. Well, that's certainly a very exciting update. And for everybody out there interested in learning more about grid metals or cesium or rubidium and or lithium, we're going to have some links under this interview that you can click on to understand these critical minerals in the critical minerals pyramid. Thank you so much, Robin, for joining us. Today. Yeah, thanks very much, Tracy.